So let's talk about composition in general uh, uh, in, in, in system analysis, right? So, so we, we analyze the security properties of a system, and now we're going to uh, put the system in a kind of a larger environment. We're going to plug it in into somewhere else. Uh, in particular, it's going to run alongside other components in a larger system. So now what happens to the security guarantees? Uh, um, so so and how meaningful are there? Does the system still satisfy them in this new system? Uh, and this kind of depends on, on, on the way which, we, which the system, our system, interacts with the rest of the, of the, of, of the, of the network or the environment. Uh, so, so the question is how does it interact kind of intentionally by design because we design it so that you know, some other system uses it or uses other, other components or not by design. We thought we are just talking to ourselves but uh, adversarially it can still be correlated with what's happening with the network. Right, uh, and we have to keep it in mind. Uh, and right, so there's two very different. Uh, uh, so this is in some sense the intentional interaction is much easier to deal with because we control it, we design it, as opposed to the unintentional, uh, the adversarial one, which is we don't we don't control it, it just happens. Um, and then uh, uh, then particular question questions here: Do the two systems have uh, 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 joint input? some joint states, joint modules, or they're completely separate, uh, uh, at least by design. Uh, do they run in parallel, or do they run concurrently, kind of asynchronously in an adversarially potentially controlled way? Uh, and again, as we said, do they use one another? Um, and uh, again, are they coordinated? In fact, can, do we, are we having like many copies of the same system, or it's just other systems that we know what they are, we don't know what they are? So all these questions come in. Um, and, uh, and things can go wrong, right? Um, so so uh, uh, there are many things that can, can happen. Uh, uh, so first, you know, if protocols we use a, a key state or key material, then uh, I think uh, uh, we know that things can go wrong in a bad way. Um, and, um, and also, you know, security can break when protocols have bad interaction between the other, so it's, you know, two zero-knowledge protocols and run concurrently and no longer zero-knowledge, even though on their own they are, in general. Uh, and also, uh, uh, even the security guarantees themselves can become inadequate when we think of, about the, 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 our system as a component in the larger system. Uh, I don't want to get into details here, uh, uh, but uh, uh, they, they have, in fact, we see an example. And, uh, and the APIs don't hold up. And many things can go wrong. And let me just give you one example of uh, something that goes wrong when you compose things together, kind of unexpected, somewhat, okay? So uh, bear with me, take, let's go this example, five minutes, I think there's something to be learned here, okay? So, so I'm going to do a key exchange, and I'm gonna use the key later to encrypt messages, right? Uh, so let's do the following key exchange protocol, kind of like textbook key exchange protocol, need them shredder, uh, lower, whatever, so, so, uh, so the two parties that have, uh, uh, that have uh, uh, public keys uh, um, for a uh, public key encryption scheme. Let's assume that the encryption scheme is CCS secure if you're a cryptographer, or ideally a deal box if you just uh, want to think about it this way. Uh, so, and the parties know the public keys of each other. Okay, so what's the protocol? Uh, uh, party A chooses a random K bit nonce and it encrypts the, uh, uh, this nonce his identity and B's identity under the public key of, of B, okay? And what B does, uh, it uh, uh, decrypts, finds a nonce, and now puts it back, encrypts it back to A together with his own nonce and A and B, right? Somehow this way kind of proves to A that he is the, the you know, he, he really received it because he is the owner of the, the, of the secret key. He's the only one who can decrypt it find, and find an A and he puts it back, puts his own notes, that's kind of him. And, uh, and then the guy uh, 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 decrypts and sends back and B encrypted again, just again to prove that he actually it's him. And, uh, and now both, uh, uh, both parties output, let's say, and B, okay? Uh, uh, this nonce, okay? Both parties, so this guy puts and B, this guy also outputs and B, okay? And, um, 
and you can show this is actually a good key exchange protocol in the sense that uh, the key secret really NA, NB is secret. Nobody knows NB because it's encrypted and under the encryption, you know, it's actually boxes, CCA, you cannot play games with this. And it's, uh, it, it's a good, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's secret and it's joined to both of them. So it's a good key exchange protocol. In fact, it satisfies some okay. definitions. But key exchange uh, is, is, is a functionality you only care about the, uh, the secrecy of the key or the goodness of the key when both parties are good. Uh, it, right, so that's part of the requirements of key exchange. Also, if you think about it, you're going to use it to encrypt messages. So, so if you anyway encrypt a message to, to somebody who's not doing what he's supposed to do, so. Uh, OK, so you want to protect against uh, uh, external adversaries. Kind of the Bs, A and B, parties trust each other. They don't trust the network. Um, yeah, but good question. So, so, and that's different than coin tossing that we did before, because then the parties don't trust each other. Um, okay, so, so, just to say that uh, uh, again, there's secrecy, there's agreement, and the, the protocol satisfies uh, all kinds of definitions. Um, now let's use this protocol to encrypt messages, right? So let's compose it with an encryption protocol that uses the key to encrypt. The key is uh, NB. That, that, that's the protocol. Ta, ta, ta. And the key, as we said, is NB. So but this guy knows NB. Uh, uh, well, he knows it here, but he only uses it after he gets this message. Right? Before that, is not done. And this guy knows the key at this point, and he starts using it here. OK? Because for, for this guy, that's the end of the protocol. OK? OK, so, so that's the protocol. And now let's encrypt, uh, uh, let's use this key to encrypt. And let's use uh, a very simple uh, uh, encryption scheme, one time pad, right, to just encrypt a uh, 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 message with XOR with the key once, and that's it. OK, that's the only thing you want to do. OK, so we have a secure key exchange protocol. And then we use the key to do secure encryption. We expect it to be secure. OK, uh, but it uh, uh, doesn't work. And here's an attack on, on the th two things together. Wait, that protocol that you just showed is not secure? That combined protocol is not secure. Combining because the last message was added? The, the, yeah, message. well, this message now, this is the, comes from another protocol, which is the, the encryption protocol combined with the key exchange, right? Okay. Yeah, OK. So, so. OK, so, so what does the attacker do? This man in the middle Eve. So, uh, so let's the three, the two messages go through, right? And then the third message, now, now there's the third message and the fourth message going together, right? Uh, um, so, so, so what does this, this guy do? So, uh, so the Eve stops these two messages, right? OK, so, but you see what's going on here. So at this point, uh, uh, A already is done with the key exchange protocol, already started the, uh, the, the uh, the, the, other, the encryption protocol, whereas uh, B is not done with the key exchange protocol yet. OK, it still expects to get the last message of the key exchange protocol, right? So what does the attacker do? OK, so he knows that uh, uh, he, this guy is expecting to get an encryption of NB, right? If he gets an encryption of NB, then he's going to be happy and going to do continue. But if he gets an encryption of something else, then he's not going to be happy, OK? Uh, so, so now the attacker is going to exploit it, right? Because what does he have? He, you know, it's a public encryption, right? He can encrypt things himself. But now he has a ciphertext, which is uh, NBXO with them. And assume that the, uh, the adversary knows that M can be one of a small set of messages, you know, by cell or whatever, some small set of messages. So if he knows that M is kind of part of a small set of messages, that he knows each value of M you know, he knows the cipher, he's seen the ciphertext. So each value of M gives him what will be the, uh, the, the corresponding value of NB, right? So what can he do? He can take the, all those candidate values of NB, encrypt each one of them, or take one of them and send it to B, and see if B is happy that he got the uh, happy finishing the uh, message, right? So, so he gets C, right? He says, let's say if my message was uh, uh, by. If the message was by, then, then it must be that NB is C, X, or by. Then I take this candidate value for NB, encrypt it with, the pub, with, with uh, uh, B's public key, and I send it to B. 
And then I kind of observe and see, and I assume that I can observe and see if B is happy or not. So we assume that B is some sort of acknowledgement. So let's, let's, I kind of have to assume here that B, I have some way of telling from the outside whether B was happy, finished the protocol or not. It makes sense that I can have such a thing. OK? Uh, and then I have actually broke the security because I know if it was by or not. OK? Just by combining the two things. If, if you could fix it by having B send an acknowledgement, right? But the protocol didn't say that. OK? There are other ways to fix it. For instance, if the, the guys uh, chose, uh, uh, would have chosen an A instead of an B, that also would have fixed it. Uh, because so, what's going on here is that B is actually kind of, is sitting there, is playing an oracle uh, for potential value. You can test potential values of NB because B is kind of, uh, you can encrypt them and send to B and see what B, see what B does. Okay? So there are many ways to fix it, right? But the point is that, uh, that you have a protocol that we, we kind of didn't see the bug uh, 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 by itself. Because just the key exchange protocol by itself, when the key is never used, uh, it's okay. But it's still random, it's secret. It's okay. And as I said, it kind of satisfies all these definitions. Uh, so it's really, it's really what, what kills it is this combination of the key with its use with this uh, encryption, right? So, uh, um, so, uh, uh, so this is like the, the right. So you, you need something that uh, that uh, uh, guarantees security, either after using the key or composition in this sense, okay? 